So no matter how long you hit it, it just fires once. Once per loop iteration. Alright, so now we're going to wire up this log data value here. And we're going to do something kind of mystical, which is create a shift register. And you can mess around with them on your own time, but in just in brief, just a shift regi register is something you only put inside loops, either a for loop or a while loop. And it's a way to, to keep track of data values from previous loop iterations. And this will become clear in a minute. <coughs> so I'm going to right click on the border and say add shift register. And notice how our thing, our, our play button turned broken here, which means this thing needs a bunch of arguments to be satisfied. So the first type of argument it needs is just needs to know what data type it's going to store. It can store any kind of data type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this wire. Actually any thick orange wire will do because all I want to do is create just a constant. So I, left, I right clicked and created a constant array object. So this is just a blank array. Just wire this in. And when you wire in something to a shift register, outside the loop, it initializes the shift register to encode this data type, which is just the array. So I'm just saying, make this thing allocate a column worth of data of arbitrary length for this, for this uh, shift register. Okay. So how do we use that? We have to use another structure, which is called the case structure. And hopefully this will make sense as we're going. It might not make sense right now. Okay. In programming structure, choose the case structure. Let's expand that. So this is just a bit of code that says, <coughs> if some condition is true, do what's in this box here. If some condition is false, do what's in this box here. And both the true and false cases have to be satisfied for for this to work. So I'm going to make a comment here just by double clicking saying log data value you know when button is pressed. And then when it's false, in other words when you're, when you're not pressing the button nothing. Just pass data through without doing anything to it. Okay, so simply we just attach our true-false. This, this button is just a two-value thing, it's just a boolean. Line it up to this question mark, which is this boolean input. Now we have a case structure. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to rearrange this a little bit so it's neater. I'm going to slide this down. Okay, cool. Oh, that looks terrible we have the wire um, going in weird ways. And by the way, if you want to see how wires are connected up, you can double click to get two wire connections or triple click to see all wire connections. So I could do like that, or I could do, I could right click on this and say clean up wire and it'll find a, an appropriate wire path just to make your code look cleaner. Okay, so now tunneling into a, a case structure is a little bit a little bit strange, but if you do it right it, it'll work. So let's what we want to do is just run this wire, this hover it to the outside of this of this true false case structure until it's blinking. And then what do we want to do if it's true? I'm gonna go to programming and we're gonna go to probably the second most important array function, which is build array. It's the opposite of index array. So, you know, the index array up here allows you to take pieces out of an array. The build array allows you to glue parts of an array together to make a bigger array. And in this case, we're going to glue a column of values, which is represented by the thicker line, to the um, 
a single value. And I've done it wrong, but that can we can fix that. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the details of this thing, but all of this is saying is basically take this uh, this array of values and then just add on endwise this single value. But this is just this is saying that the single value should be first, and we really want the most recent value to be to be last. And so this is a little trick I used to switch those wires. You can either unplug them manually or hover over where near where the wires connect and press control. Oops. And then you get this scissors icon and that'll that'll reverse the that'll reverse the wires. So anyway, well, all this means is the shift register is saying give me the value from the previous loop iteration. So this is the array of stored data values from the previous loop iteration and we're adding on this constant value to the end. <clears throat> that may not make a lot of sense right now, but maybe I'll make another tutorial on just on shift registers because it's it's kind of complicated. All right, so these here's our, our data. So this is like appended data. And this is for the mean. So now we wire that back into the shift register. So notice how I'm going to I'm going to redo that just to make it clear how I did this. Because it would be wrong. Oh, actually that's fine. Never mind. Okay. So I wired that and all that's saying is now on the first time the loop iterates, there's nothing in here. It means it basically means this is an empty array, empty or empty array of, of log data values. And then when we click log data value, then whatever data happens to be on here comes in through here and gets tacked on, in this case becomes the first value of an empty column. And so this column of one values goes through here, goes into the shift register, and then gets cycled back to the next loop iteration, so we have this value of the one value from previous. And now, if we've updated this, and we press log again, then the new value comes in and gets added on. And so we can see that the error is, error is broken here, so the lab view is not fully satisfied, which means this case structure is not fully uh, laid out. So we have this, this white box here, which just means that the case structure needs to be fully satisfied. So in this case, we do nothing. Just pass the previous value through. Nothing changes it. OK. Now we want to view that data. So I'm going to make another graph indicator called current data. Clean this up a little bit. So the current data is just going to show the values that we've clicked so far. And since they're data points, I'm just going to go up, I click on this thing, left click on it, uh, common plots, just make it boxes. Why not? And we can make them blue if we want. Right click, color, just click whatever you want. And we save that. You can see how this is functioning. Alright. We can pick our data section as usual. So, okay the mean is 4.67. Let's log that data value. We see it here. It's stored in, in memory. And let's see if we look at this section here. We're down to 4.29. Let's log that. Let's log some other values just for fun. You see where I'm going. And we have a bunch of values. And um, if you want this easier to see, just go to common plots and just play around with this. You see that 
nothing we do is going to affect the data of the previous values. All right, there we go. I'm finished. But now, once I've finished, all those data are, data are lost. Um, what do we do if we want to save the data? Okay, now I'm going to just show you how to actually save this data, uh, get the data out of LabVIEW. Okay, I'm going to, go. I'm going to use Control E, so that, that's Control Edward, to get to the opposite side. And this is actually a little bit big for me, so I'm going to, I'm just going to move all this stuff over because it's, I kind of like things to fit on one screen if I can. Okay. We, we have our mean, but I also want to get our standard deviation there. So I'm just going to copy paste this. Nothing, nothing crazy here. Left click. Add shift register. We need to initialize that one too. So I'm going to copy this. Initialize shift register. Alright. Just do the same thing as we did before. No big deal. And use this for standard deviation. Tunnel and out. Okay. We connect this to the next tunnel. And then we're all set. And we can make another plot for the standard deviation if you really want to. But I won't. Okay. So now all we do to save that is let's let's put these these data columns together in one, you know, row by column kind of spreadsheet organization. So we'll need that build array object. So we can either copy paste this one or grab it from the palette. So again, this is the programming palette. This first, that's, that's where it is. Okay. And this is just one. We want two. So just hover over it and you know you can expand it. Just drag and drag and pull. Click and drag. Connect these together. Alright. So now this is basically they call it 2D array. 2D, 2D array is basically a spreadsheet. save that. So go up to this programming, back to the file I.O., write spreadsheet. And then we have an option to write 1D, 1D data, so that's one column of data, or 2D data, several columns of data. In this case we have two columns of data coming together. Now remember the transpose trick. We go to this transpose, right click, create, constant, change that to true. So that's organized by columns as opposed to rows. And that's it. And it will save it automatically and prompt you at the end. So I'm going to save this file. And then run it and just put some value, values in there. A little one value, two values, Three values, four values, five values. Okay, I'm done. Okay, when I'm when I hit finished, the loop stops, and then it asks me for a file. I'll just say data output, and so I'm going to call it a .txt file.